Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast located right here in Greenville, South Carolina, about Greenville, South Carolina. I'm your host, as always, Stan McCune. As you guys all know, I am a realtor located right here in Greenville. Well, uh, technically, I'm in Greer, but I am on the Greenville County side of Greer. But regardless, I am in the upstate. I am a realtor here. And as you guys always know, what I always say is that all of my contact information is in the show notes should you need to reach me for any reason, particularly if you're looking to buy or to sell a house uh, or a property or whatever the case may be, or if you know someone that is looking to buy or sell real estate in any form, I'm your guy. Reach out to me. Refer anyone that you might know that uh, that's looking for a realtor. I love those referrals. I get people contacting me all the time that say, hey, I just gave your information to such and so. Be expecting a phone call from them. Uh, there is no greater compliment to me than to, to, to get a referral from someone. So I really appreciate that when you guys do that. Um, and please continue to do that as often uh, as you can. And as well, with regard to the show, as I always say, please go ahead and subscribe to it to make sure that you don't miss future episodes. We're on a lot of different platforms, not just Apple. Um, So if you use uh, other platforms, go ahead and look for Selling Greenville. Subscribe to it on there. Give us a rating and a review. That really helps the show, helps get it out to more people. Um, And if I'm not on the podcast app that you prefer to use, let me know, and I'll see uh, if I can fix that, if I can get on it. Up to this point, I haven't had anyone take me up on that, so I guess I'm uh, on the correct platforms, but I want to make sure that offer is always out there. These next uh, two weeks, as we're going into uh, Christmas and then New Year's and Hanukkah, all of that happening right now, um, I want to kind of end with a bit of a review of 2020 for the next two weeks and not be so uh, focused on uh, the specific real estate market, but just for you guys to get to know me better, and obviously I'll, I'll take this kind of in a uh, real estate direction, but I just want to kind of summarize 2020 with these last two episodes and, and make it a little bit more personal than perhaps some of the other episodes that we've had. I have a lot of listeners on here that uh, don't know me super well, some that do, um, some that maybe know me well, but don't know everything that's been, you know, going on in my life. And this is an opportunity for me to kind of share that and for us to reflect on 2020 together. And so uh, this episode is going to be what I'm thankful for from the past year or or what has uh, in my mind, what I've become more thankful for over the past year year in 2020, which has been a crazy year for all of us, right? We we all know this as every single uh, TV show or commercial or whatever says we're all in this together. Um, so, and yes, I am well aware we are all in this together. Um, 2020 has been an interesting year for me personally, not just because of COVID. And so I've got five things that I'm thankful for uh, in particular for this year And I just want to discuss that real quick. And then next week, we're going to be talking about uh, what I think is going to be several stories that kind of just summarize and highlight what me as a realtor, what my job looked like in 2020. Now, um, with regard to this episode, five things that I'm thankful for. I want to start with my health. I think that, that this is an important thing that I need to address, and not just because of COVID. Obviously, any of us that we are still alive right now uh, to see the light of day, despite all that's been going on, I think we need to be grateful just for that. Um, But a lot of you might not realize that 2020 has been a challenging year for me health-wise, even though I didn't have COVID. Um, I started the year with a ton of sickness. I actually thought that maybe I had COVID at the beginning of the year. I had a respiratory virus that doctors couldn't figure out what it was, and it took me a long time to recover. Um, I was wheezing during the night, having coughing fits, you know, in the middle of the night, which is very unusual for me. Um, All indications are that this was kind of before COVID was really on on the map, uh, you know, for doctors and whatnot. But now that we know that it's been here in the U.S. since at least 
probably December of last year. Um, it, it was possible that I could have had it. This would have been in January, but all the tests that I've had, uh, when I've donated blood, they've done antibody tests and whatnot. Uh, it does not appear that I ever had it, but it, that was how I started the year. I started the year with a bang with several weeks of just feeling awful. Um, and then in February, it kind of all came to a head when I had a grand mal seizure. Um, I think in some circles it's referred to as a tonic clonic seizure, whatever the case may be. I had a major seizure event uh, that landed me in the hospital. Actually, on a closing day, I was literally in the hospital, woozy, um, sending uh, text messages to my client to let them know that unfortunately I would not be able to attend closing. That was in a few hours. Um, and uh, that was a that was a, a scary situation. I didn't really know what was happening. Um, I actually uh, I had the seizure when nobody was home. My wife was taking the kids to school. Um, I was you know awake in bed um, as you know she got up and took the kids to school. I was just catching up on emails, notifications, social media, all that stuff. And um, I got up you know after she left to to start getting ready. And um, next thing I knew, um, I was not ready. I was actually on the couch, interestingly, uh, in our living room. And my wife was in my face saying, Stan, Stan, um, with her very alerted voice. And I felt like I was drugged. I mean, I, it was a feeling that you have when you're coming out of anesthesia. I was completely delirious. Um, in a ton of pain, just my whole body in pain. Um, my mouth was bleeding, my tongue was bleeding, all sorts of all sorts of issues. And my wife was obviously very uh, very scared. Um, and we went to the hospital, and they said that you know I had a lot of telltale signs that I had a, a major seizure event. Um, believe it or not, this is actually a blessing in disguise because I've been having health problems since 2014. In 2014, which is a year before I became a realtor, um, or maybe a couple of years before I became a realtor, um, it was um, at work that where I worked at the time that I just collapsed and I had a seizure event at that point. But um, having seizures and having epilepsy uh, apparently is kind of hard to diagnose particularly in my case. Um, and so it actually uh, was kind of misdiagnosed as a, as a different uh, condition, a condition that's hard to treat, that's uh, related to, to blood pressure and whatnot. I'm not going to go into the weeds and all of that. But the long story short is six years later, um, here I am. Finally, I had a, I've been having issues constantly uh, for six years now, where I never know if I'm gonna, you know, just not feel myself, or possibly will just pass out, um, which now we know wasn't me passing out, it was actually me having kind of mini seizures. Um, and so this event that happened in February actually, finally was the the thing that uh, all the physicians that I've been going to for six years, finally needed to conclude that, okay, you have epilepsy. Like, this is the problem. This is what we've been needing to treat this whole time. I, I had some physicians in the past that I did not care for that probably should have caught this or should have at least explored it a little bit more, but it is what it is. At least now we know they put me on a medication in February, and uh, since then I've felt really good. I still have um, some residual pains in my rib cage area from uh, just apparently how much I tensed up from the seizure. Um, it is probably 90, uh, 90% good. Um, I'm able to, to function physically um, at 90%. There's just sometimes like when I'm sitting in the car for a really long time that I start to feel that pain in, you know, my body start to uh, just feel pain just from being in the same position from a for a long time. But in, at the end of the day, this is the best that I've felt in a really long time, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, now, again, one thing that you may not know, in fact, some of my clients at the time didn't even know it, um, I was told for six months I couldn't drive. And that was because of seizures, the risk of, of having a seizure. They, they, you know, they come on you very quickly, and I, I do usually 
in the past when I've had them, I could usually feel them coming on right before they would. Um, but regardless, uh, the medical professionals that I was communicating with, they and that were treating me, they said, no, we, we need to make sure that this medication works, that you go seizure free for six months. And so I had to have people drive me around for for six months as a realtor. That's not easy. Um, I was made aware recently that there is a uh, legally blind realtor who um, that's her life. She has people uh, constantly driving her and she she's found some pretty creative ways to get that done without having to pay a fortune. Um, in my case, my wife did a lot of that, and I had other people that that volunteered and that were really kind to to take me different places. Um, but it, it created a a pretty challenging year of of real estate for me. Um, but that's the way this is. We have to persevere. We have to to press through. And actually, COVID made some things a little bit easier. You know, wh- whereas um, I couldn't drive to a lot of places anyway. Um, It was more convenient for me to do things remotely. Now everyone was doing things remotely. So in some ways, it it made uh, things a little bit simpler. Um, But that is, when I think about 2020, honestly, more than COVID, that is what comes to mind for me is my personal health and just how that impacted everything. Um, And I kind of already alluded to this, but number, number two, and this is not... This is not in order of importance, obviously, and there's a lot of things that I'm leaving out that I'm thankful for that I, I just have a very specific list just for this podcast. Um, but but the first thing that comes to mind is just my health, just because that's been something I've been dealing with all the time. And just naturally out of that comes my family. And, um, you know, they have been very supportive of me in this. Obviously, it's it's difficult. Uh, when you have uh, a lot of health issues. I mean, there there was several weeks after I had my seizure that I was basically bedridden because I was in so much pain from the uh, just how much I convulsed when when I had the seizure. I'm like I said, nobody saw it, but uh, the the pain that I had afterwards testified to it just how bad it was, um, and. My family, uh, they went through a lot. My wife, big shout out to her, driving me around. Listen, we have very different driving styles and also very different time management uh, systems that we use and that we employ in our lives. And there were some heated moments in there and some sometimes when um, I just wanted to get somewhere five minutes early instead of five minutes late. And uh, sometimes that can be a challenge. Um, and then we had to to bring our kids with us to a lot of places. I was showing houses and I'd have my whole family with me. Um, and they were great troopers. My wife was a big trooper. N- neither of us could have been happier than when we eclipsed that six month mark and I could drive again. I was I was given uh, a green light by doctors to go ahead and, and move forward with being able to drive again. Um my family, they, they they went through a lot with this as well, and I, and I am extremely grateful for them. If I wasn't prior to this year, uh, I definitely am am now. I've seen uh, a different side of them, uh, a side of them where where you know I've always been the one that uh, I feel like I've uh, always been the provider for them, and and always have um, worked for them, and I and I had to see some of those roles reversed in a way that was humbling and uh, also challenging for them. And it just makes me more grateful for them. Um, Thirdly comes to mind is obviously from a real estate standpoint, my clients, Uh, my clients have been great this year. Like I said, um, there was a level of patience that they had to have with me um, as I, you know, was going through what I was going through this year. Um, And, Really, the the most helpful thing for me was that they, you know, when they saw that my wife was driving me around, some some of my clients didn't even ever know. I, I didn't make a big deal about it. I didn't want to make any of them feel bad, you know, particularly if there are clients looking at a lot of houses. I had a lot of buyer clients right around the time that I had this seizure. So that means that, you know, for me, 
when I have a lot of a period of a lot of buyer clients, that means I'm having to drive to a lot of places and do a lot of showings. I didn't want to make any of my clients feel like they were inconveniencing me or make them feel like uh, they needed to feel bad. I didn't want them to feel bad for looking at houses. That that was my job, and if I couldn't perform my job to it's to my and the entire ability that I have to my fullest ability, then I needed to be handing off my clients to to other people. So I didn't bring it up. Um, my clients were were patient as they would see that I would be chauffeured different places in in some unique situations. Um, I would reveal to my clients, hey, this is this is what happened. Um, and and there would be some times where they would even, you know, drive me from one house to the next. Very unique. Uh, I like I said, this year has been about as weird as you could possibly imagine. Um, but I had some really great clients this year as I as I have my entire five year career as a realtor. Um, they were patient with me. Uh, we had a, a great year in a lot of different ways. And I was able to help a lot of clients with their investments with selling off homes as as they relocated to different areas. Um, people moving back to the area after having moved out of the area. It, it was there's so many stories that I could tell from this year of, of all these different things that that my real estate clients were doing. And in the end, I'm, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to be a part of all of that. I'm grateful that I was able to uh, to still work with them, even as um, my life got complicated. And it was a great year. I have uh, only gratefulness in my heart for, for all that happened this year, real estate-wise and with my clients. Um, and similarly, uh, the fourth thing that I'm thankful for, and I've thought about this a lot this year, is that I'm self-employed. Um, being self-employed is not for everyone. You have to have a certain mindset. You have to uh, be willing to go through a lot of uncertainty at different times. You have to be self-driven in a lot of different ways. Um, and I was, I, I, I've been working since I was, I think, 14 years old, I think. I might have been 15, but it was right on uh, right on the edge of 14 or 15. I may have probably just turned 15. I was the first one in my class um, in high school or middle school, whatever it was, um, that got a job. And I've been working since I was a kid. I wanted that. That that wasn't forced on me. I wanted to be able to work. I enjoyed working. I, I it was liberating being able to make money. Uh, in a way that I had never made it before, and I was I was an employee of a company in one form or another, all through high school, all through college, graduated college, immediately got a job, uh, a job that I kept for uh, nine years, roughly speaking, um, and then I became self-employed after that, and that was obviously me being a realtor. And uh, this is definitely the lifestyle for me. When I go back and think about it, it's like, wow, how, how is it that I worked all those years uh, for other people having qu- all these different quotas and all these different, you know, uh, responsibilities and ideas being thrown at me that for me, having that self-employed mindset, it rubs you the wrong way. People that are entrepreneurial, that are geared towards self-employment, um, they don't like to to work for the man, so to speak, as the phrase goes. They uh, they want to be able to set their own agenda and do their own thing. And when I finally went out and started doing that, it was overwhelming at first. But now that I've been doing it for however many years, I'm I'm settled in. And this now that I fully understand, after having done this for five years, the differences between being self-employed versus just being traditionally employed, I don't think I could ever go back. I think COVID has revealed that even more 
Um, I have some friends that are in businesses that are really struggling right now, and it's scary for them. You know, they might not necessarily know where that next paycheck is going to come from or if it's going to come at all. And for me, I'm in a situation where obviously nothing is handed to you when you're self-employed, but I'm able to set my own course. If my business is slow for whatever reason, I have a lot of other things that I can be doing. Um, If my business is busy, I know how to manage that. I can manage that the way I want to and not have someone else tell me how to do that. And I'm, I'm with a great firm. I'm with uh, C. Dan Joyner Realtors, which is a part of the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Network. Um, at least I'm with them as of this recording. Um, I'm uh, on a team, the Morgan Group, uh, that provides me a lot of great resources, marketing, an assistant, a lot of other things that that helps me to have my own team here as well. And it is so dramatically better than anything that I ever experienced out in the normal workforce. And uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful for that. Um, And last but not least, this is, again, putting a little bit of a real estate spin on this. 2020 has really made me grateful for my house. I had some people over recently that um, they hadn't, been to my house before and for those of you that don't know I moved in here uh my family and I we moved in here last year and we decided to make that big move right you know uh a lot of people they they buy their first home and then you know they might do a little bit of an upgrade for that and then at some point they do like that that big move where they move into the the real big house with all the the amenities that that they want uh and whatnot and we just des- we decided to kind of skip that middle one and make what for us at least was the big move from our from our first home to kind of like the home that we wanted to be in uh, really as our kids grow up. And um, so we moved into a, a, a big basement home. And we've got a full finished ran- finished ranch main floor, and then a full finished basement below. Um, you guys have heard me talk about it at different times, and there, there's a lot of cool things. We have a game room, a, a movie theater room. Um, we've set it up over the uh, over the past year to personalize it in a lot of different ways. I've got an office down here. That's where I am right now recording this. Never had an office in my house before. All of this stuff has been clutch. Let me tell you, it has been clutch in 2020. For me to be able to, I, I used to go into my real estate office, which C. Dan Joyner has an office on North Pleasantburg Drive near Bob Jones. I used to go there every single day. Now, uh, since uh, since my seizure, I've probably been there a total of maybe 10 times. Um, and it's not because now I, I can't drive, because I can. Um, so that's not the reason why I'm not going there. It's because now I've got my whole office uh, set up at home and it is it's been perfect for me the the perfect setup for me to have for 2020 having different fun things to do in the house having fun spaces spaces specifically designed to uh, to provide enjoyment has been really helpful as well as we've you know, went for months where we kind of couldn't leave the house or couldn't do a whole lot. We had fun spaces that we could enjoy here. We've got woods and a creek behind our house. We have in our community a a pool, sidewalks and whatnot. And all of these things I've I've really come to realize. And and I recorded uh, a while back a an episode that was uh, your house is your lifestyle. And that came out of me coming to this realization that my lifestyle would be completely different if I were going through this year at the house that I used to live in. And the house that we were able to get was able to uh, dramatically improve different parts of our lifestyle that really came to a head here in 2020. And so I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, I, uh, I'm a a man of faith. If you want to say that I'm a Christian and I don't think, I don't believe in coincidences. Um, this house came on the market 
right at the right time for us. And it's a very unique house uh, for our neighborhood. There's not another house like it in the neighborhood. And um, we were just about to go under contract with another house at the time that this one came on the market. And we were able to to uh, move on from that other one and snatch this one. Um, and I'm just grateful for that. I'm I'm grateful that I'm able to enjoy things without having to leave my home, that I'm able to get things done without having to leave my home. And uh, it's it's been a real asset to what our lifestyle has had to be here in 2020. So that's what I'm thankful for just off the top of my head. Five things, my health, my family, my clients, being self-employed, my house. Those things, again, there are far more things uh, that I could talk about that I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for a gazillion things, but those are the five things that I'm going to leave you with. Next episode, we'll conclude uh, with part two. We'll conclude 2020. How about that? Um, I think we're all ready to move on from 2020. <laughs> well, um, we'll conclude uh, this year of podcasts with part two of my summary of 2020. And I hope you listen to that. I hope to hear from you guys. Again, my contact information is in the show notes. If you ever need to reach me for any reason, please do. I'll be available over the holidays. I'm happy to hear from you. Rate, review, subscribe to the podcast, to the show. Hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Um, Spend some time with the family. Enjoy some time with your loved ones. Open some gifts. Eat some great food. Until next time, stay safe.